Brilliant. Um, guys, sorry, welcome, I suppose, to um, my little presentation, I suppose, on um, our SNC and workshop. So, like, um, kind of just a brief uh, overview of what I kind of do in, in SNC and kind of what I plan to do with um, Nave Martin's SNC is kind of, um, look, over the years, I think we've all know we spoke about loads. Oh, we need to make our players more competent in the gym and we tried little workshops here and there and they, and they kind of fall aside after a few weeks so we get a coach in to maybe um do a running block with the kids for six weeks and then it just falls by the wayside again so i think it's it's important that we implement something and um, that we that can progress over time and is in place for the next 10 15 years so if someone comes apart and rips it up again i suppose every few years etc etc and makes it better okay so that's kind of what i'm looking to do at the minute is kind of impl implement something that can be followed by all coaches at all ages um, and give you the knowledge, I suppose, of S and C because I think me and Crouchy spent a half an hour going through this earlier and like we could you could sit there for hours if 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 questions are asked of everything. And I think that's what I'm trying to get away from tonight maybe is I of course I want interaction and I'm just gonna make the point that this is not about me teaching you to be an S and C coach. Um, because unfortunately um, I spent probably six or seven years more than I should have in college at this stage trying to learn the ins and outs of it okay so um, this is not about you becoming an S&C coach this is about you I suppose finding your role um, and knowing what you can do to help S&C within your team and um, basically is what I'm trying to get across I suppose so um, look interact throughout the the presentation i will ask questions i'm gonna open the floor um a couple of times during the night so um look i'll try to keep it as short and sweet as possible and um, no longer than 40 50 minutes so um yeah so look and um, the aim i suppose of tonight's workshop as i said is not to be able to teach you to squat um and to go in and teach johnny how to lift 100 kg bench press that's not what you're um gonna get trained to do i don't need you to be able to do that um all I need is over time for you to be confident, confident enough um, to go in and implement training sessions within the gym and have your players um, knowing what they're doing and implementing the right stuff essentially. Okay, so your input and your kind of adherence to learning, I suppose, is going to what's make this going to work. Um, so look, I need you to buy into what it is. It's a, probably a whole different ball game to what a lot of you would have done um, maybe before. I don't know if anyone has experience in the S&C um, kind of department. But look, um, I'll try my best to explain um, tonight what um, your role is going to be in your S&C um, journey with your team. Um, the aim probably for me is to show you how to implement it and for you to understand then the importance of it. Okay, so that's kind of a big aim is can you understand why we have SNC coaches? And I suppose they probably got a bad rep over the last few years um, of people going, oh, sure, he spends more time in the gym than he does on the pitch and he, sure, he can bench 100 kg, but he can't kick it over the bar. Um, so there's lots of that going on at the minute, guys, but we just need to understand the importance of it. Um, I suppose. Okay, so that's probably the main point um, that I'm going to make on that um, is that your ability to adapt and to willingness to learn um, about X and C. Okay, so be open minded, throw stuff back at me and um, question me and we'll get through this as best we can. Okay, so there's about eight or nine slides, guys, nothing major. And we'll... okay. Up next is, this is where I'm going to open the floor already. I'm going to pause S and C for you. Okay, so um, Give me your analogy of S and C. What is your thoughts on S and C as we stand? I probably broke it down a little bit for his already saying um, he can bench press, but you can't kick it over the bar. So if anyone has thoughts on S and C, please throw it out there. It's a way of reducing injuries within your players and giving them the, the fundamental movements they need for playing Gaelic football. That's what it is yeah. to me. Yes, brilliant, Ollie. That is an answer that I really wanted and I didn't know if anyone would say it. So um, I'm really happy with that one. First off the bat, well done you. Anyone else, guys? So injury is a massive one. Anyone else, guys? So I suppose like the question that I'm kind of asking is, what's your thoughts on it? What do, what do you think of S and C strength and conditioning? What's the ultimate goal of strength and conditioning? 
it complements the, the, the football and the skills that you have, but also increases the fitness. You know, it, I think it has to, it's complement what you're doing on the field. Brilliant. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, um, I think, isn't it to strengthen up the muscles? Like if you get in it, it's hard to break something that's strong, basically. Go on, answer. Yeah. I suppose for me, Sam, it's to, to maximise the potential. So Yeah, it's uh, brilliant. To be competitive, uh, not just football ability, but you need to be able to, to be to be strong and competitive as well. So get the best out of yourself. Absolutely. Yeah, I think, Sam, uh, for me, it's uh, just trying to equip the player's body for the demands of, of playing football, you know. So I think somebody said there earlier it has to be kind of in parallel with the games, with their, their playing skills. So I think it's to give their body the, the strength and the flexibility and the movements to allow them to play the game effectively. Excellent. Brilliant, guys. Um, yeah, so look, he's all around hitting the nail on the head and he's have a nice understanding of what, what it is and what, what SNC tries to do, is, okay, tries to do. Um, I suppose my next question is, what should it look like to you? What should S and C look like? Um when and when relevant. As you said, I think Amory, did you say it needs to tie in with what we do on the pitch? And I think uh Paul, you made a really good point on it essentially that it has to it's to maximize potential. And I think that's the best way anyone can put S and C. It's to maximize um your potential on the pitch. Um when we break it down, you probably spend twenty percent of your GA training. Um, in the gym and the rest should be spent on the pitch but what can we do as SNC coaches to make that 20% really really good and maximise that player's potential so we're looking to take away talent essentially so talent kind of looks after itself you your job as football coaches is on the pitch can you address that talent and make it really good etc etc make them into really good players but this is taking away talent this is making your players really good athletes essentially okay so they have to be able to move better they have to be able to um adapt to the to the physical demands of the game essentially so um i want to kind of know when does it become relevant to you what do you think when is snc relevant if anyone has any thoughts on that maybe do you mean their age sam yeah i suppose i mean their age um when does it become important? Um, do we, let's say, let them get to 18 and then throw them in the gym? Or when does it become relevant to you? I think it's relevant from the very beginning, whether it's, it's a simple warm-up that you do with the kids before they start. I, I know it might be at a very basic level and it, it builds from there. So I think it's it's throughout um, football. And I, I think it has to hone into what the demands of that activity or, or what you're trying to do with a team. Perfect. Anyone else any thoughts, guys? <clears throat> Sorry, Sam. I, I think uh, we're considering it's, probably, the age group, it's probably relevant all the way through, but Dave. Go on ahead there, whoever. Uh, oh, Damien, is it? Go ahead, Ollie. No, but that's where Damien. Senior hours first. Uh, no, I, I was going to say that I think it's um, I think it's probably relevant all, right the way through. Like Andrew was saying there, even from a very early but but you're. Uh, uh, Sorry, Damien, we lost you there. I'm gonna, I'm gonna just throw in something there to you, Sam. So, uh, yeah. I, I suppose the question I'd have for you is at, at what stage? So, so we would try to do little bit, of, little bits of a balanced work in the warm up and movement and. But we'd always try to incorporate the ball with it. So you mentioned twenty percent in the gym. At, at what, at what age do you think um, it, it's it's appropriate to go into the gym for for youths 
uh, especially. And is there a way of incorporating the ball with strength and condition at under at, at uh, kid level and youth level more? I suppose that's what I'd like to know. Yeah, absolutely, Ali. So. Basically, like, as you said, the ball is so important to everything we do. And I suppose it kind of has to become a little bit of a, a little bit of get you get technical with it and, and bring your ideas into play of what can you do in SNC moving with a ball. Okay, so we all know, like, our squat holding the ball out in front or our push up with one hand is on the ball. So we can, like, we can implement loads of stuff with the ball. At the same time, if you ask about age relevance to gym, as Amri probably said, we do it the whole way through. The under sevens don't need to know that they're doing a squat or they don't need to know that they're doing a push up hold. So, like, that's where yous become really good coaches on GEA pitches and yous can implement this without them knowing. They play little games where they run around touching their bum off the cone and they think they're touching their bum off the cone when really you know they're squatting and they can squat better than anyone I've ever seen in a gym because they're so mobile and they've had no injuries, et cetera, et cetera, okay? So we can implement games all over the pitch to incorporate S&C movements. And to answer your question, I suppose, on the gym, um, it kind of comes to a sense of how good are you bringing them into the gym? How comfortable are you being in a gym setting and allowing them to lift weights? Um, and look, there obviously becomes a qualification with stuff like that as well and, and a little bit of that as well. And um, insurance probably comes into play. But look, I think if we can, if I can give you an understanding of what ages we implement stuff at and what movements come in at certain ages, um, I think that might um, make it a little bit easier for you to understand. Okay, so we actually finish on that. Um, I'll kind of bring you through a player's pathway of, of what should be happening at each age, I suppose. Um, yeah, so it kind of becomes relevant straight away. Um, they don't have to know they're doing S&C, but they kind of um, do it all the time throughout um, their playing career. And it's about creating um, strong players. Um, so look, before you go yeah. on there, sorry, just a quick interruption. Um, I know there's, there's coaches on here and coaches that watch this back that are involved with the nursery level. But for you straight off the bat, what does, we'll say, S&C for nursery level or under eight may look like? Obviously, it's not going to be in squatting 100 kilo in the gym. Just touch on a little bit what you were saying there about, let's say, squatting while sitting in the ball, okay? But what I'm saying, sorry, what I'm trying to say is in your foundation course, which a lot of you would have done recently, like the main focus of dealing with kids of this age is your ABCs, your agility, balance and coordination, okay? That all as well ties into what Sam is talking about, okay? So it's important to keep that into it. And keep that in perspective as the Sam's going through that. For me, that question Sam said, what is S and C for you? For me, S and C is the whole way from nursery to adult level. Okay, so it is important to to keep that in perspective as we're going through this as well. Yeah, brilliant point. Um, brilliant points, I suppose. And um, the ABCs are really important, and I think from probably from the nursery age to under twelves. Um, ABCs become massively important and um, look I could sit here all night talking about your your drills that you can do on the pitch I suppose but that's kind of over to you's um, you know a little bit better than me maybe on the pitch of what to do um, but look when you break down those games they're all as you said crouch sitting on the ball that's a squat or if they have to touch their knee off the cone that's a lunge or if they have to like hold themselves up off the ground or push their mate over who's standing on one leg that's single leg balance that's pushing strength so look there's loads of way we can incorporate and it should be incorporated the whole way up ga leinster um have abc protocol done the whole way there's so much information on ga and um, leinster's page on abcs so look i'm not even going to talk about it because you can literally just go there and get it you don't have to listen to me say it and um, so it's literally there and um, so that's what snc hopefully is for you or um as you said um i suppose when does become relevant is is really good okay so another kind of um the aim of s and c for nave martin okay is kind of how do we do this how do we how do i get you to be confident to bring your team into the gym um or implement s and c movements is basically my whole aim is how do I make you better and confident to do this? Okay, so look, when we put it in context, I suppose, 
the low GEA is so far behind and um, in terms of S and C and um, Bally Bowden have three fully paid S and C coaches. Um, just for a little bit of context, okay. So that's what we're striving to get to. Um, as we say, baby steps, and we're gonna we're putting it into action a lot uh, quicker than our clubs. So that's really really good. Um, so practicality is probably the next one. And I suppose the big question you're gonna ask me is, oh, sure, I can't get my team in the gym. Um, the seniors are there, or the ladies have the team or the the gym booked for an hour on a Monday and a Friday. We train on Mondays and Friday. What are we gonna do? Um, so that's the practicality side of it that we have to kind of come up with as a club and as, as coaches um, to make this work, okay? So we've only one gym and we just have to make it work as best we can, um, I suppose. Implementing that at Nave Martin kind of takes away the, the pain external coaches to come in and implement six-week programs that don't really work um, in long term. Um, the players don't really buy into it. The coaches just sit against the wall and, and watch what's happening, okay? And no one's learning anything. That's my problem with it no one learns anything and um, the players get fed up and um, because it just doesn't there's no consistency to it okay and uh, i've seen it happen loads and um, through the, throughout the club when i was a young fella and it kind of um happened out loud as well um as i was young fella as well so um look that's the kind of aim at nave martin is to is to stop that happening and to take ownership and educate ourselves and um, to implement these um, S and C sessions ourselves. Okay, so you've got loads of resources throughout the club. You have got um, a few full time physios in McFannin, Robbie Smith, um, et cetera, et cetera. You've got myself here um, who's taken lead on this. And we have, um, as I said, loads of resources online, um, which are GEA Lancer and GEA Full Stop. Okay, so loads of resources. Don't be afraid to go educate yourself. Um, I think here on Sloan is running practical workshops whenever everything opens back up so look um, I will be trying to send you on as many of them as you can as we can and you'll obviously do practical workshops when um, things open back up here as well with me so and um, that's how we're going to aim for SNC of Nave Martin I suppose. And just on that point Sam on, on Kieran Sloan there there was a message shared in the group there the other day and if it wasn't shared I'll share it now it's called return to play or I think it's preparing to return to play or something like that. So basically it's a work lens of yeah. put together and Kieran Sloan is running our loud GDA in regards to strength and condition. He's leading that and I think he was telling me yesterday something about giving programs to teams to make sure they're basically in a good place returning to play and also working alongside the coaches as well. So have a look at that and if you have any questions on it, let me know. Yeah, correct. Yeah, like that was my, I have that wrote down to mention at the end. That resource is 16 weeks starting this week. So right up to when they are planning to have teams back, I think club players back. So that's 16 weeks of conditioning work, gym work, pitch work, and um, conditioning with a ball. Um, so that's a really good resource to look into. It's actually players can sign up to it themselves and use as coaches can use it as well to, to look at session and program sessions then for your team as well. Okay, that's a really good research uh, or resource. So look, the idea is to create players that are faster, stronger, conditioned, confident, powerful, mobile, and reduce the risk of injury. Um, there's a lot of hows in there. How do we do that? Um, which we is not the aim of the session tonight, I suppose. Um, you don't need to be S&C coaches. Um, or you don't have to train to be. Um, look, the faster thing, the stronger thing, conditioned, um, more powerful, more mobile, um, are all all really important factors of good players um, do you ever notice how most of the best players in Ireland are probably a little bit faster than the competition a little bit stronger a little can go a little bit longer they're a little bit more conditioned um, and I suppose what that does is makes the player really confident and I, that's what I found over the last um, probably year with myself is that I know I'm fast and I know I'm strong and I know I'm conditioned and I know I'm there because I do some amount because I just work in the gym and I work hard at training and that makes allows me to be confident okay so that essentially is what we want to make our players so that when they walk out of the gym and they're walking onto the pitch and they've got a match on a Sunday they're confident and their bodies can do what it's asking them to do there's nothing worse when you're going out and you know you haven't done any running and you're absolutely going to be juiced after 10 minutes okay so we want to create confident players and the big one there, I think Ollie mentioned at the start, is reduce the risk of injury. The player's no good if he can't tug out for you at the weekend. Okay, so that's I suppose the biggest thing with S and C is making players um, robust um, and can tolerate heavy loads, can tolerate high speed running, and can tolerate 
external factors like tackles and um, jumping and landing etc etc okay so that's what we are as minus the boys Nave Martin Football Club are trying to create our players to be does anyone have am I missing any points there on that um list or does anyone think any of them are stupid or anything that needs to be added anything there everyone happy with it Sounds good. All right, guys. So, how are we going to implement the plan, Dave Martin? Okay. So, what I'm going to show you guys is a sample week and um, what your week should look like, essentially. Okay. So, let's say this is how it's going to effectively work um, in Dave Martin. Okay. You are going to spend, you have your pitch session on a Tuesday at 8 p.m., you have SNC at 7 30. You have a pitch session at 8 p.m. on a Thursday, you have SNC at 7 30 p.m on your thursday okay so is it this practical yes do you have to spend another night in Nave mountain football pitch no is it easily to do yes you're just getting a place to be there half an hour early for training um training's from half seven to nine o'clock guys that's what it is be in the gym for 7 30 and we'll be out in the pitch at eight so what's really important to consider here guys is um Obviously, you will be taught and what the session is going to be down the line. That's not important right now. Is probably comes into the role of your head coach, your assistant coaches, coaches. And um, so I suppose they have a massive role to play here. And let's say your head coach is out in the pitch setting up from 20 to 8 um, with the with the training session laid out. The assistant coaches need to be proactive here and have the boys in the gym at 7.30 and getting that session done with them, giving them ownership. Um, I suppose to to get it done okay so that's facilitating and um, what we're looking to do okay so does anyone have any questions on that or does that make sense that look we spend 60 minutes a week in the gym let's say we spend 60 minutes in the gym in week one to week four that is four hours we've done in a month in the gym and let's say we train for let's say eight months and um, we've probably had it up at 32 hours um, gym time with our players. Um, that is a lot better than nothing, guys, and it's a lot better than what um, we would have done in the past. So, look, if we can get 32 hours out of players from under 13 to 18 years of age in the gym inside eight months, I think we're doing really well. Um, does anyone have any questions on that or wants to throw anything out there about just, having that just something, um Just something that was brought up earlier on, I don't know who said it or was it on the slide maybe, that it's confidence. So for me, we would say uh, some of you might, be, uh, some of you might be shocked, but I wouldn't be a man now that would be um, SNC based and be in the gym the whole time, you know, but SNC, the word itself can be a bit intimidating, especially like I know when I was, I suppose gym wasn't as popular when I was going through it, but people still did go to the gym and me personally, I wouldn't have been able to even lift a pencil off the ground, let alone been able to do a push up. Do you know, so if someone said to me, come and do a gym session, I straight away would be looking for an excuse not to, I'd be out kicking freeze or something that I wouldn't have to go and do that. But an adult there assisting them, working alongside Sam, these are all things that's going to build the confidence in their players. And once they have the confidence and over time working with Sam, they will be able to do their outside sessions themselves. Over time, obviously, as they get a little bit older, but they'll understand what's necessary. And over time, they will become confident on it. And going back to a couple of weeks ago where a new structure in place with managers, head coach and assistant coaches, there's no reason why this couldn't be done because let's say, for instance, the head coach is out throwing cones out 20 minutes before a session. The manager can be the one in supervising what's happening in the gym. The manager can be the one of block booking the gym for a half an hour before sessions. OK, so it's not one stress on one person to go and do all this. If everybody follows the role, the rule or not the rules, the roles we have. It's role responsibility again and these stuff become easier to incorporate into our, our weekly planning. Brilliant. Anyone else, guys, have any thoughts on that? So, so Sam, you, you mentioned that it's right. You gave an indication from gym work from 13 upwards. I know some of us on the call here would have younger groups and we build it into kind of the warm up. Do you have an yeah. advice on how much time should be spent 
you know, you know, loosening the body out. Kids are very mobile, but it, it is good to get them into that routine and, and the importance of that warm up session. Yeah, absolutely. And look, that comes back then, I suppose, Amory, to how good of you, how good can you be at making those games S and C based? If if that makes any sense, without um, saying it's stupid, I suppose is the time allocation towards S and C and your warm up should essentially could it make up twenty minutes, fifteen minutes? Let's say again, that's twenty minutes two nights a week and um, if you have your team two nights a week or once a week whatever it is um fully based on as you said it's going to be game based and um, you're not going to have them squatting in the gym so um i suppose i i'd always look if i was doing a session on the pitch with kids or with teenagers that my first 20 minutes is spent doing something snc based whether it's what would it be the warm-up or snc with a ball where they don't know that they're actually doing it um does that answer your question or is that? Yeah, just, yeah, no, it, it's trying to build that in and I say making them fun and, and bring it into games. They don't, they don't actually know they're doing it. So, it, yeah, it's, I think a lot of it we focus trying to build in the skills, but it's just important to focus on, I say, the ABCs as well. Yeah, absolutely. And um, a lot of the time the ABCs will be spent maybe doing without the ball. Um, as mad and all as that sounds as GA coaches, the ball doesn't have to be there to do, for us to do ABCs or to make training fun. It doesn't essentially have to be there. If you're spending 10 minutes, your first 10 minutes is without the ball um, of that 20 minute block, your second 10 minutes is spent with the ball. So your first 20, um, your first 10 minutes is uh, jumping and landing and they're landing on one foot or they're jumping over a little hurdle or they're jumping into a circle um, or they're tagging them, mate. That's all SNC based and that can be done without the ball. And then if you want to make that game fun and throw the ball in, um, I suppose that can be your second 10 minutes. That's a nice little way of breaking it down, I suppose, if you want to implement ball and non-ball, um, I suppose, because they need to be able to move well with and without the ball, if that makes sense, because if you think yeah. about how much time in an actual match, once they get older, they spend with the ball is very little, okay? So, look, they need to be really good with the ball and they need to be really good without it and they need to move well is what I'm trying to say. So, um, time allocation, I like 20 minutes because you're normally going to spend 60 minutes minutes on the pitch with them 20 minutes s and c 20 minute drill skills 20 minutes match is a nice little breakdown that i think um i hope that kind of helps and answers the question it does yeah thanks brilliant anyone else guys um think or any questions i suppose on on getting that s and c session done half an hour before your training session does anyone worry about it actually does anyone think oh jesus that can't be done or what if they're overloaded or anything like that Sam, um, I suppose something you need to consider as well is the demands some of the guys have from other sports. Like a lot of them play soccer, a lot of them play rugby, and they'd be they'd have an S and C condition or an S and C program as well. So you probably need to make sure that you're you're not overloading them. Those guys in particular. Yeah, perfect. And that's actually a slide down the line. I maybe shouldn't have asked that question, but um, that's a consideration we have to make as coaches. Um, is the external load of other sports that is going on in their life, especially when they get to the ages 14, 15, 16 and 17 probably is the big gap where they're going to be playing rugby or they, they think they're going to try and make it play, et cetera, et cetera. Um, like myself did, like I taught that myself. So um, look, that's that age where we, we kind of have to really look at the players. And I'm not saying this S&C has to be them going into the gym and and squatting 100 kg on their back that's not what it has to be if their external load is so high and that comes down to you knowing your players and um, it could be them going in and spending 20 minutes foam roll or stretching i don't like foam roll 20 minutes stretching or activation on their hips or moving their hips away and in ways that will mobilize them better etc cetera, etc cetera. okay so um, i think when people think s and c they think big weights big strong people it doesn't have to be like that when you look at um maybe some top intercounty players, they're not that big. They're all lean and strong and have a solid core base. That core, that 30 minute core uh, session could be core base session, getting them to learn how to turn on the core. Okay, so um, as Craig probably said, it does maybe scare um, people, I suppose, when they hear that or the thought that comes into their head, maybe big, strong athletes. Um, so look, the external load is definitely a consideration we have to make as coaches. Um, and I suppose you as a manager um, are making that call, um, but it is a consideration, so a really good point. But on the overload thing, another point is one hour, 30 minutes exercise in a day for a teenager 
isn't that, isn't a lot, I suppose. Twice a week. Um, look, their bodies are highly adaptable. Um, we have to look after them, but look, we need to build up robust players, essentially. Um, so I'm not too worried that if they do an hour and a half twice a week, um, that they're going to break down. But as you said, you have to know that player and what their external load is. I think, Sam, as well, it's a scenario the loud seniors have, have, I wouldn't say stumbled into or stumbled upon, but it's something that's come in now since Mickey Hart came in where, I could be wrong exactly with the times here, Sam, you can correct me, but let's say, for instance, the training is set for half seven. Uh, Gavin Devlin would be out in the field, I think it's half an hour before training, and yeah. he has um, like real like, kind of technical skill drills or skill activities or skill challenges like where you might have to solo with a zigzag around the cone and kick your score, get the ball, come back out, do the same in the opposite side, where it's not necessarily coach-led training, it's more just refining your skills, and he didn't force it upon anybody, you know, and it's even saying to me, turn up training 30 minutes earlier, I'm thinking, are you, are you mental? Like, I, I don't want it. But then, over a period of maybe a week or two, everybody, like, everyone was there early, half an hour early, practising. And yeah. being involved, like, and that kind of falls into what this is here. We're not forcing the half an hour on anybody, but you're creating the culture or creating the environment to allow players to take advantage of this. Yeah, absolutely. A uh, really good point, Crouch. And I suppose my biggest kind of, um, I don't know what you call it at the minute. It's kind of I feel like we've let players down um, over the last number of years, uh, and like I had a minor team. Um, in the gym here a few weeks ago before lockdown, etc. Cetera, et cetera. And some of them still can't squat. <laughs> and that kind of uh, annoys me in a sense of us as a whole, as a group. We haven't done anything to help that player um, improve. And we kind of let him down and just left it to his talent. And uh, look, if he's good enough, he's good enough. Um, I'll try train him on the pitch. But look, he doesn't move well. He's He's been labelled slow since he was 12, so it doesn't really matter. Um, and players get labelled slower, or, or he's really fast. But we can change, and make players fast, and we can make them powerful and strong. Look, as Crouch said, we're facilitating this for the players. They'll buy in. They'll buy in. They're going, oh, I get to go in the gym half an hour before training and learn how to to look good. Essentially, that's why that's why you make it fun and make it kind of um, attractive to them. Oh, look, I'll have bicep curls. So I'll do bicep curls with with a. Uh, Paul in the gym uh, five minutes before I go out on the pitch. Um, so look, you make it fun. And I suppose, as Crouch said there, you create that environment, that culture, um, that they get themselves through it. Like as Crouch said, that first week, I think there was a few of us at loud training the half an hour early. And Gavin had the drill set up. We were kicking around, having a bit of crack. It was fun. And then after week three, as Crouch said, everyone was there half an hour early. Because everyone's like, oh, sorry. Sam was having fun at the pitch half an hour early. What, what's that about? And if players see that and you create a fun environment in the gym, um, the gym doesn't have to be scary for anyone. So um, I think if we can create an environment that um, it's it's open, it's learn, um, it's educating everyone. And when they see how much better it can make them as a player, that's when they really kind of enjoy it and they get, get into this kind of buzz about being at the gym. And and when they see it kind of go into action on the pitch and they put they feel good about themselves. That's what that is is what we can do as coaches to to allow them to be confident and then be confident players. So that's a, a nice point, Crouchy, I suppose. Um I don't want to labour too long on that. So really good. I think that training week can work, guys. Um I'm I think it's really good. Um a really good idea. Um and look if anyone has any questions on it or how we're gonna implement it, I suppose, um shout them. I just wanted to ask you, is there is there many fundamental differences between strength and conditioning for girls teams and boys teams um, good question. yeah good question Ali. um i actually yvonne might take a little bit of offense to this but i done a little bit of uh, sessions with the girls the ladies team last year and um i don't know if this is look i'm going to say it anyway they're a little bit behind in s and c terms um because they haven't been trained in it and I think it gets left out with girls, doesn't it? In a sense, maybe like uh, they don't go to the gym as much, um, or they don't, they don't. It's not kind of implemented in the training, and that's so wrong. It should be kind of implemented really well, and um, maybe a little bit more. Because I think the the knee injury in in ladies football, and um, I think Vaughn, you'll have my know a little bit about me. Use I think I had three or four injury cruciate injuries in in one season, and then I had them in the gym the following three months later, and they all can't 
when they do a step up, their knees are collapsing. And that's just lack of strength in their glutes. Um, so they haven't been put through it. So to answer the question, Ollie, absolutely, we need to implement it with ladies. Um, and the difference is not that much. They're still playing the same sport. The movement patterns don't change. The squat's still a squat. The push is still a push. The pull's still a pull. So nothing changes, essentially. The only thing that we have to kind of take into consideration is that they're actually girls and that they're teenagers essentially and that's another consideration and um, I suppose the same with boys I suppose with the puberty thing everything there different factors that come into it that come into it and I don't know if um, I suppose do we understand that as coaches I suppose maybe it's kind of the question I'm asking back to you Ollie. Yeah, well, look, at it. I think in, in defence of the girls, I don't think the resources were made available to them, um, oh, hopefully not, absolutely, uh, absolutely. Uh, up until hopefully this year, there's a bit more going on with it, but um, it, they've been kind of neglected in that department. It's been all about the boys and the older men's teams, so it's about yeah. time to readdress that, I think. Um, yeah. But yeah, like, it's, it's interesting, it's just interesting because there's, there's psych physiological differences, there's a lot of things taken into consideration, and we have girls' teams coming up now that we have to... Just be wary of it. It'd be great to get this started with yourself and with, with other lads in the, in the club um, for both codes, definitely, you know. Absolutely, absolutely. And as I said, like that, that injury ratio with girls seems to be a little bit higher in, in increasing knee injuries. Um, so look, we need to protect our players um, um, really well and, and make them robust um, athletes, um, I suppose. So um, look, I think the girls kind of enjoyed the sessions they had in the gym last year with myself. Um, bit of it's kind of a little um for me it was something i never done before so and seeing that kind of thing of them coming in and their knees falling in and it's called a knee valgus essentially so seeing that actually and then like putting it to the managers going you said three or four injuries cruciate knee injuries last year why is that happening and it's because we haven't implemented it as a club over the last few years so look that's a, a really good point and, and definitely something that we need to implement that all grades and all and with all teams both uh, female and male Next um, slide is probably our considerations, guys. And um, we've took in a little bit of uh, we talked about kind of um, their teenagers, and um, they are going through puberty. Um, peak height velocity comes into stuff like this. It gets kind of sciency, um, which I won't bore you with. Stress comes into it. School comes into it. Is the parents going to let them go to the gym um, half an hour early? Um, other sports, as we already spoke about. Um, so how do we make it work for them? Um, so what do you think would stop this plan working or, and do you have a solution? Let's say, guys, we've got, I have one wrote down here, wrote down here is um, compliance from players. So let's say they've got that. Do the, how do we make the players buy in? How do we create a culture that the players want to do this? Anyone have an for me? Sorry, Sam, I, I'll just come in there. I missed the start of your um of your presentation, so I might be missing out on the things. But like, right. One of the things I noticed when I came out to Monster Voice Force was the the massive um the bit of crack that was in that gym beforehand, the training with between players, something I had never witnessed before, and it was kind of a place that people wanted to go. So I think that's probably where you, where you're looking at is you kind of touched on it earlier on with with, with the uh, training on the pitch. It's just lads having a bit of crack. So if they get in together, they know what they're doing properly, and then they're having a little bit of crack together. They'll want to go, and then once they get into the habit, then of knowing what they're doing in there, it, it'll flow on. So I wouldn't be great in gyms myself, but that's um, I think just a little bit of fun is probably the best bit. To getting lads to welcome the gym, I suppose. Absolutely good answer, John. Hold on. Nice one. Um, yeah, so if anyone else is on, uh, jump in and cut me off. Um, I suppose, guys, there's probably two main ones for me is kind of 
The compliance from the player essentially is you create that environment that he wants to be there. And I suppose we kind of created as a senior team, just speaking from experience, that's the only experience I have. It's kind of, that was a buzz, as John said, of when it was rocking up half an hour early here and been able to go into the gym together and have the crack. So um, look, you create that buzz for your team, make that happen. That's easy to do. You put on the tunes and um, you have them doing their exercises and their light chat. So don't make it strict, okay? So that's one point I'd, I'd put across to you. The next one is actually on you. It's coaches adherence to the plan. Okay, so it's easy for you to go and oh look, they what so what they missed a half an hour gym session, so like, so what, and then it turns into week two, and they still haven't done their gym session. Okay, so adhering to the plan and and carrying out the plan um, is really important for you. So I think the buy in from coaches, and once the players see that, yeah, act like you know what you're doing in there is half the battle. Like I'm doing now, act like you know what you're talking about. You create that environment for fun. And then they want to be there. They want to buy in and they see the benefits of what I can do. OK, so that's, I suppose, a few um, considerations we have to make and um, to, to not allow anything to, to stop this plan from working. OK, and um, gym booking is another one that will obviously have to be done up within the club and um, a little bit of a row as well. OK, so all things that can be dealt with, guys, and I suppose. Um, coaches adherence and um, players adherence is, is probably um, the main points. So, guys, I'm just going to give you a little look at what essentially I am putting together for you. So, this is what um, a player pathway essentially is going to look like. Um, so, an exercise pathway in the gym. So, I know you're mad to ask me, um, how do I get my players to squat better or how do I get them to run faster? Um, this is all going to come in time and this will probably be our pra first practical workshop. Um, so there's five main exercises that um, the club is going to focus on, um, I suppose, for all our players to be competent in and perform well. And the five exercises are a squat, a hip hinge, a pushing exercise, a pulling exercise, and a core bracing exercise. Okay, so there are five main exercises, and then a little bit of an add-on is jumping, okay, which gets a little bit technical, so we won't talk about it. The main ones are squat, hinge, and a core bracing exercise and um, so as you can see on your screen guys a level one squat pathway um, is a wall sit. so essentially when you sit up against the wall you're in an upright squat position your knees are bent at 90 degrees your hips are in line with your knees your feet are shoulder width apart and you sit against the wall okay so that's level one let's say we are at for a little bit of context guys that is under 13 that first week in the gym they are doing a wall sit you are well able to coach a wall sit. That is what you showed them. They do a wall sit. They do 30 seconds by three sets um, and they're happy out. When your players become competent and um, doing a wall sit, it's easy. Um, we progress to level two and we do a bodyweight squat. Again, you will be confident enough to teach the bodyweight squat. You will know the key points of a bodyweight squat and you'll deliver the uh, bodyweight squat essentially okay again players become confident and can complete the exercise with ease three sets for 10 reps and um, after a few weeks after six months whatever it is when once we spend our time in the gym and we progress this on we add a little bit of external weight to the squat so a goblet squat is essentially holding the weight in front of your chest and sitting down into your squat position the goblet squat incorporates and um looks for an upright torso okay so it doesn't allow you to fall over so you see a lot of adults actually when they try squat is actually what happens is their chest nearly goes over their knees so the goblet squat allows you to stay nice and upright so that's why we implement a goblet squat overhead squat is probably the most technical um squat and pattern there is and it's it's really important that we teach our players to overhead squat and um, when they are young and able to do so so an overhead squat is when the arms are locked straight out overhead the barbell which we'll be teaching them with a dowel is across the third, the crown of the head, um, and they can squat into a nice depth in overhead squat. When they are really confident and they can do overhead squat, they do a barbell squat and they start loading up weight, and then it becomes strength exercises, okay? Um, so what has to happen, guys, is we need to um, run through these levels at different ages, at different times. And what it comes down to, guys, I'm not going to sit here and tell you um, no player at 15 should be barbell back squatting. I can't say that to you. I don't know the player. Um, so this is when you get really good at coaches and bring in your coach and I 
um, and you'll create this kind of confidence in yourself over um, a number of hours in spent in the gym looking at your player's squat and knowing what a correct squat technique is to be able to say, look, right, you can move on to your goblet squat now, and um, that body weight squat is excellent. Um, your heels are on the ground, your back's nice and straight, and um, you've your core braced and your toes and knees are pointing forwards. So over weeks um, and hours, that is what um, it'll look like. Um, that is just a squat. That's the one I have done up for tonight, guys, to just give you an idea. Um, does anyone have any questions on that? Please have some. This is your last slide, by the way. I've talked for too long already. Would you be happy coaching that, guys? Look, that, that that's a good pro progression plan, Sam. Like, you know, that I, I'm talking about under 12s here, a wall sit is simple to do with them, body weight, squat, follow, and that. Like, it's just, it's nice to know that progression is there for them throughout the years. Some of them might be able to do a bit more, some of them might be able to do less, but that's that's a great starting point. For, I'm being, from my perspective here, I'm talking about, you know, for, for the girls and boys teams that we're coaching. So thanks. Yeah, that's, that, that's very well explained there, actually. Anyone else, guys? Sam, so I, I think you asked the question, you know, um, how do we feel about, you know, being in the gym with our players coaching now? I suppose the answer, certainly for my answer, is today I don't feel equipped to bring a team into the gym, uh, you know, or their are they doing everything you said just correctly today? But I suppose over time, um, you know, you practice and, and spend time with people who know what they're doing and watching what they're doing. That's where you learn. But you know, certainly from my point of view, and maybe other people on the call, you're start, starting certainly at a low base coaching gym gym work today, in my view. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I suppose that's what I brought down here is kind of confident coaches make this work. Um, and you've been able to see in your coach and I been able to look that's that's the hardest part of my job probably is getting like this is easy I can write all that all day like it's it's me getting you to be confident um, and I suppose that's going to be practice as you said and that's going to be time spent in the gym and I suppose um, we're not going to learn unless we get a little bit uncomfortable okay so um, I will not put you in a situation um, where you have to go in and teach your players to barbell back squat if you can't do it look so that's not going to happen i'm not i'm not trying to say that i'm just giving you the visual and i think that visual explains it really well i don't think i need to talk over um so it's kind of you can't progress till you can master that wall sit you can't progress to a barbell back squat unless you can overhead squat um, it, um and i think that'll that'll work for our five exercises that we've spoke about um our hinge push pull core and our squat so um, confident coaches and um, creating a coach and eye for the technique and knowing that they can't progress and when to progress um, will come over time and hours spent in the gym. I think Sam's point on coach and I and what he what he um, answered Pogi was he the players all these exercises you see Sam will be teaching them how to do it. Okay, while Sam's the like Sam could teach. Um, a novice them five exercises and how to do them in I'd say about 15 minutes okay Thanks, do you know what I mean like they're, they're not massively complicated moves now there's a few little tips and, and, and stuff to look out for to see if somebody's doing it correctly or not um, and that is that is the coaching I Sam's talking about you as Sam said we don't expect our coaches to go in and be able to efficiently carry a full uh, gym program for these players. That's Sam's job and that's what Robbie and Mick is going to assist them with. What Sam's asking us to do is to spot a child that's unable to do a body weight squat, okay, um, is going up onto the tippy toes or something. I don't know the ins and outs of it, but that, that isn't doing the body weight squat correctly. And all of a sudden then, a week later, you see this same child trying to do a goblet squat. Then you then can liaise with Sam and say, well, look, um, Craig Lynch, couldn't do a bodyweight squat last week. I haven't seen him being able to do a bodyweight squat properly. 
straight away you're notifying Sam. Sam's able then to go and speak to the player, show the player, help the player. Might have to regress the player back to a wall set, okay? But then everybody is taking control of the situation and then basically giving the players a chance to develop with age appropriate stuff or age appropriate is wrong because as Sam said, you could have a 15 year old that's competent at a barbell squat. But as a, the key point is, we will not have you in a situation that you're uncomfortable, okay? Sam will be working alongside the players, he'll be working alongside you. It's important that you work with him, ask him questions if you're unsure, and go back to his point of the coach's eye. Can you spot things that aren't right? And liaise back to Sam and then put the player at the level he needs to be at to develop to level five, basically. Yeah, perfectly. Um, hey guys, so that's kind of all I have for you tonight. Um, I hope you took a little bit of something from it and I didn't just talk shy for the art. Um, yeah, so look, obviously, this progresses on now to me um, getting hands on and teaching you to be confident to, to teach me the exercise. Um, so look, that will happen in good time. Hopefully, I'll have it all in place. I'm going to give you the program. I don't need you to be S&C coaches. I just need you to be able to spot and fix um, and be comfortable um, taking 20 players into your gym. And that will come. Um, I will teach um, you how to do that. Um, guys, for listening um, to me, um, I hope I made a little bit of sense. And if anyone has any other questions, give me a text and I'll do my best to help. Thanks. That's all from me, I suppose.